So if, like me, you had a particular goal in mind when you went to university for the first time, getting a first class result might bring you closer to that. And I say might because, as I've said before, I firmly believe that good work experience and a range of life experiences are much more important than coming out with a first class result. In some cases it still can be quite important for whatever reason. And truth be told, I'm assuming that if you've clicked on this video, you are here because you want one of these, a first class degree certificate. Here's my six tips that'll help you get there. Tip number one is to always understand the question and its context. So in most cases, in order to access the first class mark range, so in most cases to get into the first class mark range, you are going to have to demonstrate working beyond the source material. Therefore, there are three parts to this. Firstly, you need to know exactly what it is that the question is asking you to do. Secondly, you need to know how that aim fits into what you are supposed to know from the point of view of the person asking the question. That might be your lecturer or your supervisor. And then the third part is obviously stepping beyond that into the next territory. Firstly, you need to cover the things that seem obvious from your core material, because if you don't hit those, sometimes that will stop you from moving into first class range. Once those essential elements are firmly in place, then you must start to read around the subject. The library is your friend, online journals, Google Scholar. In some instances, legal cases can even be really interesting. I certainly found that when I was studying biology at university. The key thing is to show that you have independently gained a holistic view of the material and then use that to make high level analyses that you wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. Tip number two is to talk to other people. Absolutely crucial is to talk to other people in the same situation as you because chances are good one of them will have a perspective that is better than yours. And unless you have some deep-seated need to graduate absolutely top of your class, then this shouldn't really be an issue for you. Sharing what you know and offering what you can offer to everybody else in exchange for what they know makes you more likely to succeed as a group rather than struggle in isolation. It's very unusual for university exam materials to be graded based on a curve fitted to the data afterwards, so you're much better working as a group and all doing as well as you can. Number three is taking the lead on group work. Now this can be a slightly contentious issue because it doesn't always apply, but if you're in a case where it doesn't apply then I think you're probably lucky. Group work is potentially dangerous territory for someone that's wanting to maintain a high mark average because chances are very good that not everyone in the group is going to be as motivated about getting that first class result as you are. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. Different people have different priorities. Equally, you could all be on the same wavelength and you all want 80% scores on everything. In which case, fine, you will have no problem, but that's unlikely to be the case. If you have people on the team that you know categorically are not likely to work as hard as everyone else, you need to own it, take responsibility, offer to check it before it gets handed in and offer to hand it in yourself. It's more work up front, but at least this means you have final control over everything and can make sure that it's up to your meticulous standards if that's what you want to do. It can be difficult and frustrating, but in the long run, I don't think you'll look back and regret it. Halfway through now, you should select modules tactically. Now, if you're in the lucky position of being able to choose your own modules, absolutely do not pick the ones that sound the most impressively complex, because the chances are pretty reasonable that they will end up living up to their names and make your life very difficult. I did this in the second year of my biology degree, and I ended up with multiple very intense classes going on at the same time that had to be studied for a lot independently. What I think you should do is instead find the courses that have either the lowest number of exams, the easiest exams, the least amount of combined exams and coursework, the fewest lectures so you've got less information to remember, or at the very least, best case scenario, the ones you find interesting. And I know and fully appreciate that it sounds like quite a cheap sort of half-assed way to approach your education, but if you want a first class degree, then it's not about taking those complex classes, it's about taking things that you're going to score well in. Tip number five is knowing how to revise. And this is a difficult and very personal one, but you should ideally know how you revise best 
and figure it out as quickly as possible. And this can actually be done using the core material from your course or abstract information, something completely different, like you might try learning a new language. And granted that this can be very difficult to figure out and it might take a few rounds of stressful examination seasons before you get it nailed down tight. But not having to stress about revision methods was one of the best things I ever learned how to do. But not having to stress about the methods that I would be using for my revision was one of the best aspects of the latter half of my undergrad degree. In my case I had a system that not only worked reliably, I knew pretty closely how long it would take me to memorise perfectly a given amount of information and then how to adjust that for varying amounts of information because it certainly wasn't linear in my case. But once you get these systems down it absolutely changes your educational life and I really really encourage you to try it. And the last and possibly most important tip for this video ladies and gentlemen is maintaining a positive attitude. Getting a first class degree for most if not all subjects is gonna be hard and people know it's hard and that will only become infinitely more hard if you start to adopt a defeatist attitude and don't think you can do it because you'll just give up. Let me give you my case for example I came out with a final degree score, a final average of 70.6%. Now when all said and done that rounds up to 71 which does get me a first but if I hadn't pushed myself right right up until the very last exam of my final year you can see how easily I could have potentially fallen the wrong side of that line. But now it doesn't matter because now I have it under my belt and it can't be taken away. So I'm really glad that I put that extra effort in, even right up until the end. Stay confident, stay motivated and you will be able to do it. I remember my headmaster from secondary school used to regale us with an old Henry Ford quote, I think it is, which is, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're probably right. That applies in so many different dimensions of life and it certainly applies when it comes to getting a first class degree. Good luck, I believe in you, I'm sure you will get there. Let me know in the comments down below if you've got tips for getting first class marks and also let me know why you want one. That's always one I'm interested to hear. Why is getting a first class degree important to you? Take care guys and I'll see you in another video. Bye bye for now.